can anyone, uh, Aaron, how can I see anyone answer me? <laughs> or can you help me? I cannot see everyone's faces. Anyone can answer me. What is moment of truth? You have two options. One, you can actually ask them to type in the chat box. Two, you can actually click on the gather review to see them. Wow, well, I, I think it's a bit... Um... <laughs> ask them to type in the chat box. I need, okay, I need to get to see the chat box. Well, um, can, you, can you tell me? Can you tell me anyone type, Aaron? No one type yet. Okay, but. never mind. I think everyone a little bit needs some warm up. Okay, moment of truth. So if uh, today is for university clubs, for student clubs, I believe a lot of you haven't been working in the workforce or in a company. Now, it's very common in a company, we have this line or this term, this phrase called moments of truth. What is moment of truth for a company? Let's see two parties. Number one, we need to have a brand. The next one is the customers. And then the third one is the product. So let's see who are the brand, which one is the brand? Obviously, now it's Toastmaster International. It's the brand. So this is the brand. And then in this organization, how do we make our customer buy or to get interested to the product? We are the person who really need to impress our clients. So moment of truth is almost like how you can break, break it or make it is that kind of moment. And there are so many moments at a meeting, before meeting, I mean uh, pre-meeting or post-meeting. And all these are about relationship building. So today we are going to talk about this moments of truth in Toastmasters this organization, how we are going to uphold this uh, moments to make sure our customers, our new members or existing members feel happy to retain in this, to have the retention at our organization. <clears throat> so let's see the next one. Now, I've prepared this slide. I also need some reaction. <laughs> I, maybe you can use your hand to show. How do you feel about, um, Jolie B, this, this company, poor, good, or very good? Okay, Aaron has, has his uh, thumbs up. You mean, yes, good, very good? Okay, how about the others? I think, I mean, Aaron, can you see the other? I cannot see the other's faces. <laughs> I see a couple of them actually raising up their hands right now. You know what, up. you can unmute. I don't mind your, your voice. Everyone, you can unmute and give me some response. I love it, but let, let's everyone participate. Okay. So anyway, there is a poor, okay, or very good. Now, by looking at this form, I will say this form. <laughs> when I encourage people to unmute, there are a lot of uh, background noise. <laughs> anyway. Is it... Sorry, can someone, is there a lot of background noise? Can you unmute? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay I'll, I'll do my best. Please unmute, please unmute. Okay, I'll continue. So the next one, you can see Apple Store. Now, no matter Apple Store you have been, You have been shopping at Apple Store or not? You may always hear from the from the news how they line up, how the report uh, talks about the um, the service of Apple Store. For me, I really love Apple Store service. I will rate them very good. Why? Because when I, whenever my MacBook got any problem, my iPhone got any problem, when I call, they always promptly reply me. So that is also the service that we always feel. So if we see a brand that, that relates to service, how promptly we can handle and how we can react is also very important. Okay, the third one is, um, which one? The third one, I cannot see my, yeah. You know, that is um, the Taiwanese that 
bubble tea, that place. So now I don't see your response. I think a lot of young people also love to go there. And I hope the um, service, you also feel very good as well. And then Fairwood, we also have Fairwood. We eat over there for lunch or dinner. And then Teawood is another restaurant. Now, all these are just an example. I just want to sh see how you show of your hands to see how you feel service. So once you can register service with a brand or a place that you always go there, then you can relate how important that place has to give you the impression. Um, just like the um, restaurant, you can see now this is a, absolutely a very nice, very clean, and you can see that lady with a very nice smile with a very full plate of probably is a Caesar salad or something. So you can see that person is coming with a great smile. It's almost an add-on item for whatever you purchase. And that service is what we like to see in Toastmasters as well. <clears throat> uh, how do we go to next, Aaron? I cannot. Uh... No, you, you just you click on it. Okay. So you can see, we really like to see the wow customer service, customer experience. Nowadays, we don't um, emphasize in the word customer service. Service is too simple. It's about experience. How do we give a wow customer experience is, nowadays when, because I'm also training people or company for customer service or customer experience. In customer experience, we differentiate two different things. Customer service is just like I serve you and that is a customer service. Customer experience in Toastmaster, how will I relate to that experience is, I introduce Aaron to join Toastmaster International. Then I would like Aaron with his word of mouth, he is going to tell two more people or three more people. And then his friend, that three friends, will tell six or seven more people. Now that is the customer experience we like to build. And that is the VIP program. Just like you go for any kind of uh, brands you always shop, how do they see you as a VVIP or VIP? That is the experience we like to register people to have this experience. Then they will bring more People come in. Okay, also delight your customer is very important. And I have prepared four different words. Attract, you attract your new member first, and then you need to convert, uh, sorry, you attract some guests to your club meeting, then you convert them to be member. And then you obviously you need to close the sale. You need them to pay the membership fee. And the next one is you delight them. How can you delight them? As like Talis is like over 20 years. I'm in the, in the organization also 10 years. How, can, how do you make a member to be delightful to be in, uh, in this organization so long? It all depends on our job. So you can see um, now I don't have a chance to hand, give you the handout. There is a handout, you can check it from the website or Aaron can pass it to different university clubs. You can see the student club can own this Moments of Truth worksheet. Now, what is this worksheet? I have, I have, um, I have listed the um, three different items. Just uh, Talis has already just highlighted a few already. The first one is first impression. Now, talking about first impression, do you agree that sometimes people will not give you a second chance? You only have first, only chance. That is first impression. I give you a story. For example, if I shop at a place, that person give me um, an outfit and I try that top. I do not tell the um, salesperson that it is too tight, it doesn't look good on me, I will not say anything. But I just say, mm, I don't like it, I just put it back. And then the salesperson may feel that, oh, what happened? What happened to, uh, to this customer? Why is it she leave? Can she tell me? 
No, I'm not going to tell. I'll give some excuse. Oh, I need to go back to work. It's lunchtime. I don't have time. It's all about the first impression that doesn't impress me. Now, probably is um, that salesperson is not sensitive. That salesperson did not find my right size and give me a wrong size and try to push the sale. All these are wrong. So that is the, my first impression to that company. I will not, if they will not make me feel delightful, right? So there is no second chance. If in case that salesperson feel, oh, I know the reason. Oh, Agnes, can you come back to my shop? I want to let you try another outfit. No, sorry. First impression is first impression. So all the time, impression, first impression is very important. So it's, it all depends on preparation of our club meeting and also how we package our club image in the website, in social media, and also individual, how we greet them, our members as well. Then also membership orientation. Next one is fellowship uh, varieties. Okay, let's take a look of how I spend this part to talk about how we make our guests feel special. I just talked about the experience I had when I went into a um, brand that maybe Uniqlo or G2000 or Buzzini, whatever brand. Now, let's see how if a salesperson, that person can make the guest feel special. Put it in the shoes of Toastmasters meeting. How do we make our guests feel special? During meeting, we always have name tag. Now, by the way, I also very professional. I wear my name tag today as like even at home doing this uh, presentation. And also we can prepare our old TM magazines. I know now it, uh, a lot of you, how many of you are using the Yi magazines? I mean, I, I still have a lot of old TM magazines. So bring these old TM magazines in case those student clubs does not have it. You can ask other clubs to get some OTM magazines and put it on the table to welcome your guests in such a way that the guests can take the magazines. You know how they feel. In my experience, um, guests really feel that I have some freebies. I can take home a magazine. They don't know how, how much it costs, right? And inside there are a lot of materials. They can refer, maybe one day they can look at it and find some material they need for work or for their project, something like that. So old magazines are also very important to put at a club meetings. And if there, is any, if there are any guests, it will be very nice to have an experienced or seasoned member to sit beside him or her, always to show care. Because if you show care and also you share, this is very important to make someone feel, hmm, I'll consider next time to come back. So when we feel you are special, that kind of feeling, after the meeting, what are we going to do? Now, either you are in the nighttime meeting, I know Polly you is nighttime, maybe, um, a Hong Kong U campus is in the daytime or nighttime. You also have a post meeting dinner. So invite your guests to join your dinner. It's also something very important to make them feel special. And also send them email or now it's very easy. Send them a group photo by WhatsApp as well. Then every guest will feel that, ah, oh, that, that organization or that club really treasure me and uh, this is very important now after one meeting next meeting before that next meeting maybe a few days when you, your your club already prepared agenda it will be very nice to have send agenda whatsapp the agenda to that potential new member because that guest all, may also come back next time so i would like to give you a quote that is, a guest never forget, never forgets the host who has treated him kindly because kindness is something very important. If you serve or help that person kindly, someone will remember, maybe even for life as well. How do you make a meeting special so far? You 
you are in um, in a college or in a university club meeting, then you can also see there are like a lot of meeting a lot of ways to make your meetings special. Now, nowadays, social media is very popular. You can do a poster and post it at your Facebook and then create a, a Facebook page. Then you can always post your poster as well. And also send the mass mail to different kind of uh, ways, for example, email, and then to your new potential guests as well post event poster to club for example there is some event you also like to have some kind of news or some kind of pictures sent to them is also important now for example this is a zoom meeting you also like to make it something new because actually it's very attractive just like Talis was talking about now the zoom meeting is very successful and we can always feel so proud that we are having a zoom meeting now is a virtual world it's no more always need to rely on physical meetings. So somehow this can also promote the student feel that now we are practicing how to use a Zoom or online to do a meeting effectively. So that can also be one of their project as well. So like workshop, theme, get some attractive themes and also invite some speaker. I know like Aaron is always going to help different university clubs as well. And he always show up to be the speaker. So, so there are so many experienced speakers in uh, Hong Kong Toastmasters. So you can always invite them. So for any university clubs, student clubs, don't be shy, reach out and then see what kind of workshop and also events that really create more noise make the student feel this is a place i like to go and learn and have fun as well celebration now celebration is always very important how many of you when you are at a meeting you feel oh someone's announcing who is the best speaker okay who is the best uh, evaluator okay somehow that's why the TME is a very important, it's a very important role. That person can always create some noise, like say something like a drum roll, who is the, who is the um, uh, best table topics speaker. Then make people feel that if that person is a guest, that person definitely will feel very special because when you make them feel, oh, I'm the one who will win that ribbon, then that person will remember your club forever. So that is uh, make some excitement and also make them feel special in a very, very small way will make a difference. Next one is also induction. Now, when someone joined the meeting, you also like to have an induction, like an orientation, before the orientation, induction ceremony, someone come out. Now, I know some clubs may not have um, that budget to buy ribbon or those kind of cars, from Toastmaster International, you can always make some self-made cards and then just get that person, that new member come out and then shake hands and make that person feel that, oh, I'm so welcomed. And even with a picture, it already make everyone feel very special. Now, the last two points are icebreaker speech or maiden speech by a new member all these you can make a ribbon or make a card to acknowledge that person all these will make a very big difference for a new member and then for um, to make a meeting very special last but not least is to invite some star ge now general evaluator can always bring a lot of great sense of like no matter it's humor experience sharing and also make you feel that it's um it's a great club all these kind of work will make a guest or a new member also feel very special because you can see someone from another club coming to your club to be the general evaluator so these are the um, points making our meetings special is there any question So next one, you can see the other four, five, six points. Four, five, six point in that handout is the second page. Second page is talking about program planning and meeting organization. That part is like, you first of all already recruited. You already have those uh, new members coming to your club, joining your clubs. How can you really make every members 
feel the program is exciting, feel the program or the meeting content is uh, very fruitful. Everything is planned by president, VPE, and also the other ESCOM member as well. And membership strength. Later on, I'm going to show you the list of what is membership strength and also achievement recognition as well. Now, talking about just the three points, we are going to uh, look at how do we retain existing member. Retain our existing member, we, all, we can always look at, there are a few different roles in Toastmasters. We do have some kind of title. The title is called advisor or mentor or some honorary member. Now, some clubs have some honorary members. Those are the very seasoned member or very old member, many years in that club. You can always in, invite them to join your meeting to make them feel special. And also, if you give them that kind of title, somehow that title, of course, that person also needs to perform the role as a mentor of a new member or also to be the advisor of that club as well but still to make someone already in this community very long someone also feel very bored for example i i feel oh, already 10 years or one one day i will become 15 years or 20 years i feel i have no value or how can i feel have i do have value for that club somehow it is both way. Either I contribute or the club members create some kind of title to that seasoned member to invite that person to come back more often. That will be another way to give uh, both sides feel very special as well. So the next point is about get them involved is also very important. And how do we make some existing member feel special? Do you have any any um, cases that existing member also sounds like they want to quit. They don't want to renew the membership. I mean, it's not new. This is very common because sometimes people already feel, oh, I've been here for so many years. You know what? I have some other life priorities. I don't want to continue my, my membership in a club. So somehow WhatsApping that person, building the relationship, contacting an old member is always a must. And also sometimes invite a um, seasoned member to have casual lunch. Maybe you ask them to treat you lunch <laughs> and then maybe you give some excuse to say, you know what, I have some question to ask you. I like your advice. So that a seasoned member feel very special and oh, a new member or a quite new member, invite me for lunch. So this will also help a seasoned member to think that the value to come back to his or her own home club is very important. So that's why the next, next term, that person will continue to pay the membership fee. So that is sometimes it's always pays more attention will make a big difference. Okay, this page is about how do we make things perfect? Actually, a lot of things are very basic. You can see, I use some simple, simple symbol to, to show. Do we have some very basic supplies? Do we have the venue managed well? Do we have the meeting always on time, all the details? And then also supply management. Do we have everything, oops, like time card, gaffle, agenda? I know nowadays we always talk about uh, e-copy. Still, I feel that have, uh, have a hard copy ready for some members are also important. And also name tag as well, and also the ribbon for different um, person who win the best, best speaker, those ribbons are also important. Now these venue, I, I got all the pictures are very nice for the corporate club uh, venue. I'm sure the um, student clubs, you also have, may have some rooms are also nice. Make sure you arrange all the chairs, everything. Welcome to all the guests as well. <clears throat> meeting support. What are meeting support? I find that meeting support is not only some um, dead object. It's not only the paper, how you write the ballot or some snack. Meeting support sometimes is also 
matters is the person. Person is like the VPPR, you shake hand with the guest, and also the VP membership also always work together with the VPPR. Then you can see whether that guest has written their name on the guest book, and then when the TME is going to pass the road to that person to welcome all the guests, you can always see which guest has come and then you shake hand with them and know that you will not miss anyone. These are all the important things. Okay, this is a very important page. Now, I know the XCOM member today, probably are most of the XCOM member joining this uh, COT. XCOM member, if you go to the dashboard of your, to see your club performance, you can see how your DCP points are. I'm not going to um, explain all the points. I just extracted this one from one of the clubs uh, from the dashboard. So make sure that XCOM always check the points and then see how you can achieve. That is about the um, achieve your club achievement. Go back to our handout. Now this handout, I think Aaron can give pass to all the um, club. The first part I have, um, I have put every part in highlighted in uh, in different i mean extracted dif different part here the first part the top part is about how about we rate our club no matter which club you are student club you can see one to five if you rate yourself we never meet this standard then that means it's time to really check with your team whether your moment of truth is on the standard you need to proceed to we always meet the standard or even excel the standard. So that is very important to use this um, meter to measure your standard. Now in this, in this moment of truth worship, the first one, I think I'm not going to go through too much. I already use a story to talk about first impression. You can see how you uh, welcome your guests to make the first impression to retain their guests. Next one is about membership orientation. Always keep the induction as well. And mentor is another thing. Imagine if you enter university, you always have the orientation camp, right? And after orientation camp, you like someone to show you what to do, where to go, when is the program, when are the classes, what kind of professor I'm going to meet. All these kind of small detail, you like someone to give you some guidance. This is the orientation. Just like you enter a new club in Toastmasters, if I'm a new member, I also like someone to give me more orientation. Someone guide me, that person can be a mentor, can be the ESCO member as well. Next one, fellowship. Now, we also use this word fellowship. Fellowship is a place that really creates fun, friendly and also a supportive environment as well. So this is very important to make use of all these kind of um, men, mindset to help to create this kind of fellowship, a very positive place to get people stay. Next one, next page, if you go to that handout. Program planning. Now, I, I just mentioned about program planning. I like to highlight about, there are a lot of small parts. How can we make people feel, really remember the meeting, small things, how the table topic or activities, how positive people give evaluation. Just give you example. There may be sometimes someone will not return to the meeting anymore, even I'm a member, because I have a very bad experience that someone give a very negative evaluation. Now, if it happens, it is a job uh, of the committee member to talk to that member nicely, politely, to get that person to understand what is the role of an evaluator. Instead of making people feel so bad, they need to be positive, constructive. So this is always a learning instead of turn someone off and then people will not return to the meeting next time. <clears throat> membership strength. Now, membership strength, we always need to know if our club is below 20 members, then we are already feel that it's time to really need to recruit new members or always be proactive and keep on recruiting before the, the club 
is below 20 members. And then retain the member membership. I already uh, talked a lot of different ways. Even old members, a seasoned member, how do we keep them back to our club? There are a lot of ways and also new members. How do we excite them as well? These are, uh, we need to pay attention as well. Achievement recognition. Now, if we have achieved the club, because there are different level of those achievements, if we achieve the first level, then we always need to make it very big things. May, perhaps you can, you can announce it at your club meeting, you can announce it at Facebook to let people know how you achieve, how well your club has done because of all the um, effort of every members. Now, there is a small part in that worksheet at the very bottom part. It's about you, how you rate it. If you rate it from one, two, three, still there is a way to go to four and five. So this is a very best practices uh, chart we always need to pay attention to and how we can understand the course of the challenge as well. I'm not going to talk uh, into detail about the best practices chart, you can always get these four pages from Aaron or the uh, student clubs. So the final words are always work as a team. No matter, no matter you are an XCOM member already or you are one of the club members as a student club, always work as, as a team. And then with all the example or my sharing before I said, always go the extra mile and you can always share with your friendly other clubs as well, then it will make a difference to grow your own club. And last but not least, always enjoy and have fun at the Toastmasters uh, meeting. So is there any question? I think my time is pretty good, it's 3.05. Aaron, did you see anyone? That's a question. So uh, the, the question would be how to regain members' interest after suspending meetings for a couple of months. Can you mm -hmm. give some advice for that? Um, let me repeat your question. You are, your question is how do you sustain the interest? How do you regain members' interest after sus suspending meetings for a couple of months? Mm. Uh, is it a question from the floor? Yes, it's a question from the floor. Yes, I know. Um, I think the only thing is about how you keep the connection. I think nowadays we have a lot of group chat or uh, in our group chat, we WhatsApp each other and then how we can even make a call to see how the other person are making speeches and encourage them how they can stand in front of the screen to do some kind of um, speeches is also a way to practice. Don't let them give any, any excuse to say, you know what, I'm not interested. I mean, it's not easy to sustain the interest and um, because now this is the way how we, we face um, the virus and we, can, we cannot meet physically. And, uh, <clears throat> On the other hand, is also can encourage them to go to join some other club to look at, uh, join the other club meeting to also have more fun at Toastmaster community. The more they belong to the community as a whole picture, not only their club, that is also a way. Now, you may, you may say, um, will they join another club? I mean, as university student club, I don't think they will join another student clubs. Then at least they have a chance. And I think another thing is um, community club can also consider to have joint meeting with student clubs to let them feel that they are being cared and they are being loved by the community clubs as well. Is there a um, suggestion? Uh, okay, Aaron? I think that answers uh, that question appropriately. There's another question. Yes. Uh, so uh, a, a student club member actually mentioned that uh, their club will recruit members in the orientation period of the university. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they see new students, they will run away in shyness and embarrassment after they have told them that their club focus on English public speaking. So is there any methods to, uh, is there any way to improve their promotional methods? Mm. 
Um, you mean, does it mean that they feel shy? Yeah, it's, it's just that the shy? new students, they will feel shy. And then how do we promote to them? Uh, is there any interactive, interesting way that actually gets them to at least try the first meeting and stuff like that? Mm, okay, um, thank you. I think to spend a few minutes to talk to that student first, to understand a little bit more about that student. If that student is more aiming at the achievement at the university for their grades, or that person, the hand gesture or the expression like to have more fun, then you can go to that personality style to sell to that person, to promote this organization, whatever can let that student feel interested. For example, that person like to have more fun because it's already like always go to school. Then how to get fun? You can emphasize, you know what? Toastmaster is a great network. There are a lot of fun. There are so many activities we can join. But if that person care more about study, then you can say, you know what? You can meet a lot of um, great experienced people, successful people, successful speaker who can help you to even achieve better in, the, in your academic area. I mean, it always needs to depend on the conversation to understand the needs. We cannot promote something without understanding the needs, correct? So I think, first of all, we cannot say there is only one way to promote Toastmasters because some people like to have achievement. You can say you can go to the stage to win, to be the world's champion. Wow, that is great. So, so someone automatically will feel so interested. But if you tell that person is so shy, cannot feel comfortable to even go to the stage in front of everyone. You tell them they can, they can be the champion. I'm sure that person doesn't care because I, even, I don't belong to that category. I just want to be at the back, backstage. Then you can, you can promote what? You can promote, there are a lot of leadership uh, learning. That person may uh, really prefer and also treasure. I will use the word treasure leadership learning then you can t tell that person you know what there are a lot of leadership learning and in the uni university there are a lot of leadership learning skill you can apply to other role in your university path as well i mean obviously you need to talk to that person and then if that person is not very keen to share with you too much get the whatsapp and get the phone number perhaps in the next call you can have more chance chances to talk to that um, classmates or that new member at the orientation uh, camp, then you can get that person buy in, come and take a look of a Toastmaster, know that person's char characteristic or personality, then you can see which person to pair up with, um, with that new member to talk to that member and then easily promote the membership. Is that okay, Aaron? Yep, and that's one last question, final question before we move on to the next stage. Okay. How do we encourage members to join online meetings these days? I think there are like so many pro, uh, pros about being online meeting now because for their future, for their future benefit as working in the workplace, I think online is, is a very common thing. VCO conference and these kind of call is also a great practice as well. So tell, let them know this is something is a great practice for them. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't feel it's too difficult for me. Maybe I'm already uh, in the workforce, but I, I know students may feel quite different. But sometimes it's always a habit. If they already have the habit in a physical meeting, they will compare. But if they first join the online meeting, use Aaron to give an example. You have a lot of online exposure. I think you can sell it even better than me. <laughs> okay. Thank you Aaron? very much. Yeah. Thank so you're on plus for Agnes for, for a wonderful workshop. Thank you.
I need to start reflecting on myself in a portrait to think about what wise words that Agnes actually mentioned. Now is the time whereby we have a short little break whereby our technician will be pausing the recording. You can have some snacks, uh, drink some water, go to your restroom, which you definitely know <laughs> where it is online. Don't worry. Just take your some time. And the second part uh, of the meeting will be hosted by our question master, Mona. And then later on, we'll move on to our next session. So give round applause for being here as well. So now break time. So feel free to keep on uh, if Agnes is still here. Like, assume you can uh, you can stop recording for a bit. Paul tells me another way of re uh, rewarding is is that the club is currently faced with challenges of losing its meeting venue and core members. And the AD is working hard, closely with the club uh, to find an alternate venue and recruit new members. And anyone interested, please help that AD. So I think this is uh, one way to say something which is, uh, which is pleasing to the ear and you would not uh, make the people, the person feel offensive or defensive. Uh, another project that I'm working on is project five of effective coaching, and that is the high performance leadership, which I did in my old uh, education system. And that is, I did it for, um, for, for a gavel club. Now I'm doing this high performance leadership for another purpose, and that is to hold the appreciation dinner a few months later in June, and I'm starting using my communication and leadership skill to, uh, to form this committee. Already, I have given my first speech to my home club and asking them to support me on this a uh, big project, I give them a vision of what it is in the appreciation dinner. You will be acknowledged, you'll be appreciated with gifts and also you will be um, ap applauded for all you have done. And then now I am starting to do uh, another thing is that to form my action team and I've already found my two MCs and uh, one, another one who can do something uh, like uh, an icebreaker. And also I'm looking, I'm site visiting a restaurant. So all this is to be a leader, you have to think ahead, plan ahead to a vision for the, for the team to follow you. Oh, this is so much I have to share. I don't want to take too much of the other uh, division director's time. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Irene, for sharing uh, on a very good start of uh, lots of different projects that you can do. Now, I really want to get to know our next person who has been a pathway guide and also has been helping out in the whole district for, on pathways and technologies and tips. Let's welcome Ben to, to share a bit about yourself, like which path have you taken and the most fruitful experience that you get it from it. Hi, Ben. Unmute yourself. Hello. So what's the question again? No, no question. Uh, introduce yourself and also share about the path that you have chosen. Uh, my name is Ben Wong and I'm a Division G Director. The path I'm chosen is a dynamic leadership and also persuasive influence. Uh, I think actually, like as most of you know, the most of the path are quite similar, and then that's why I don't think there's too much to worry about when you are first going to choose the path. And so my point is, don't worry about too much if you are choosing the right path or not. Some people if they are interested in following the program and they can make speeches based on 
the path. Like, I'm say, um, seeing a lot of people when they're doing, say, the dynamic leadership, what they always talk about throughout the path is about leadership, which is good, which is part of why the, um, the, the purpose for the pathway is. But I um, certainly recommend if you can also talk about little bit about the um some just have some variation in your topic like you can talk about your family you can talk about some books you find interesting and uh, i i don't think you have to definitely follow through because you're doing a certain path and you have to stick with the theme for throughout the whole path and that's my sharing is a answer your question thank you very much ben for for that I, I would like to like ask you a bit further like is there any projects that you find very fascinating that you definitely run, want to recommend to your fellow toastmasters here uh i've done one with the video i uh, <laughs> which is quite quite interesting for me because i have never used a video to record myself before and it turns out to be quite a disaster I might say um, because I'm just using a phone and um, even though the quality is quite good it's also testing your skill of editing which is um, I'm doing the podcast one I'm doing a video podcast and that's why I haven't followed through and do the other do another podcast, so I'm only doing it for the project, but it definitely makes me quite uh, interested in doing a further podcast or just do some video in general. I think you've done a really good job. Look at the current settings that you're doing. Like I can't do the background of a Toastmaster logo, for example. Look, look at how cool it is just to practice a lot of different online skills. I think... You're yeah. You cool. were you were doing some other stuff, right? You were having like some some other background when you were on hold before, like like that one. Yeah, like like so, a crazy lion dancing, for example. So yeah, so you you were selling yourself short, right? You have some skills yourself. You can teach the people using online. I think we all can teach together because the skills that we learn is actually very fruitful for any members to, to bring live to an online meeting. It's not just an online virtual meeting. It actually can be a face-to-face -face one. It depends on how to customize it. But really great sharing by Ben. Give a round of applause for Ben. Now, next one I would like to welcome is our Pathways Ambassador. And this person is, is a very seasoned Toastmaster, heavyweight, and most importantly, definitely knows more pathway ide ideas than I do. I would like to welcome our Molly up the stage. So give it a round of applause Molly. Molly, are you there? Hello, yes, I am. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for, for the time. So hello, everybody. This is uh, Molly Yip. Uh, the path that I've chosen Oh, I've chosen it since 2018, the launch, right? So I've chosen a Cantonese Traditional Chinese path, persuasive influence. Yao Sui Fu Li Di Ying Hao. Basically, this is what its name is. <laughs> so I chosen it because um, I go through the assessment, answering 33 questions of what I like to do, what I want to learn, my what is my competency now, and this is the path they recommend. So I go for it and I've achieved that uh, so far level two. I take it extremely slowly. Now the most interesting uh, project I work on, it is the level two finishing path, a uh, finishing project, understand your leadership style. Now I thought I was a DTM, so I said, oh, it should be easy one. So I did it the first time and the results, the speech and whatever it is, the evaluation, it is not going up. So I have I decided to redo my my my, my project to understand my leadership better. So eventually I have done this last level two project four times before I fully satisfy myself and give it a pass. So 
Yes, this is so. This is the most fascinating project I I have done in my persuasive uh, inference project. Uh, I'm a persuasive inference path, which I like the best so far. Mm. Is there any any projects that you will find that it's easy for any member, any Toastmaster to go for it the first time that they go, uh, they they choose? Is there any projects that they find? Um, uh, user friendly, uh, they can learn a lot from it. Is there any project that you can recommend first? Okay, so the project that I like the best, and many members would like the best, it is actually the icebreaker project, introducing yourself to to the to the club. Now, a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm a dry people. Oh, I have no story to tell. You know, I'm a very boring person." But in the end, it is not right. So no one knows about you. So you're new to the club. Every story that you tell to the member is always fascinating. And similarly, a lot of the veteran member, when they redo the level one project, icebreaker project again, is also fascinating to the member who, who's okay. Because this member has been a club, has been a, with the club for ten years. I, I when I joined, I never hear or heard her icebreaker speech. So that was also very fascinating for the new member to. To listen to, okay. So icebreaker project, I have to say, this is the most interesting uh, project that people can really uh, think about it. Now, the second project that I also think it could be interesting and challenging one's ability, it is the research and presenting, the level one project three. Now, present how do we present data interestingly and logically effectively this is a challenge of a lot of the speaker so in that project that that layout is for okay, it, it will teach you how to present data it effectively interestingly so this is what i like about the project as well so if i would like to recommend the project actually level one project one and project three is the best project of <laughs> of persuasive inference thank you for sharing molly give a round of applause for molly for sharing that so last but not least is about myself. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Aaron. I am in Pathways itself. I've completed all paths. So I spent over one year and a, nine months um, doing like 20 speeches per week. Uh, that was a crazy time of my year at that time. But I was actually exploring different uh, projects and its effectiveness and also identifying uh, lots of different usage of Pathways. In the checkbox itself, you will actually see a matrix that matrix itself actually shows the overview of all the paths that you will see. And you can actually have that as an overview, uh, print that a piece of paper because we spent around like six months to research on that part. So that will be helpful for your club if you need to ex explain to your new members, oh, Pathways is about like that. Five levels, there are over 63 different projects to, to do from, to choose from. And also like if they choose a particular path, what are the required projects or what are the electives to choose? So for me, I particularly love engaging human path because engaging human path is more on the practical approach whereby I'm not a person with lots of funny jokes. Look at my face. I'm not funny. Literally. I don't bite though, but it's still fine. But when we talk about engaging humor, I look at the elements in the whole path, especially in level two, whereby I start to build up my humor stories. It actually gave me the awareness for that because I never thought that I need to be on my humor story belt until that project reminds me to do so. And at the end, the biggest challenge for me in that path itself is the level five project, which is doing an 18 minutes to 22 minutes of humor speech workshop. Something that I really, I can't overcome that. And I have to spend a few times just to try to test the audience reaction the first time it was very horrifying because no one laughed. They just give me a stone cold face. So I redo the whole thing. Second time, no one laughed. Then I wonder, is it my fault or is it my material's fault? So I explore a couple of things and I discover that, oh, humor cannot be forced. So you actually have to kind of simultaneously think on the spot to bring about lots of different elements into play. You can't force your audience laugh. You can connect with them before you can make them laugh. So that's the lesson that I've learned. Now, we have three very experienced Pathway panelists and I would like to ask our panelists, obviously, um, 
when you first encounter pathways, tell me your challenges that you face and how do you overcome that? I would like to start off with our Molly to, to, to answer that question. Okay, the challenge. I think the first... Molly, unmute yourself. You have been muted. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, yes. so hi, yes. The first challenge that I have, and also the biggest, I it is the usage of the the base camp, the the technology thing. Uh, it is, I have to admit that it is not easy. So when I go in, I say, oh my goodness, so many things to do, so many settings has to be done on my computer and all the pop up window orders. So I I have to say that after ten minutes, I give up already. <laughs> then a few days later, I literally need to log on again and play around with it. So day by day, I learn a bit on how to operate the base camp. And this is what I would recommend you to do if you have not done so. Okay, so go in, try it. Uh, there are also many online resources helping you to get through how to choose a path, how to uh, start your project and, and the like, right? So, so this is... I think this is a major challenge for me to go through the, the technology oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, give it. So I'm, I'm sure other, you know, Ben, Arian, and even Aaron will have some other challenge. So, so you guys, why don't you guys share as well? Uh, I would like to pass the stage to Irene to explain your challenges when you actually first encountered Pathways. So let's welcome Irene up. Okay. Thank you. Aaron, actually my challenge is also with the base camp because I don't know how to manage it. And uh, so very often I will email or WhatsApp somebody to help me with that. And then when I got it through, then I could do it. Especially when after doing uh, the after assessment pro uh, page, I forgot to click the submit and it's not submitted, so that's why uh, my record is not sent to the VPE, and so I have done something uh, very foolish. And another thing is that uh, I, I need to find time to, uh, to do my project in a club, and I need to find uh, time to prepare for it. And usually I will print out the project and then look at it carefully because I don't feel like looking at it in my monitor or in my cell phone. So um, that is my real challenge, finding the time to do it and also to do it properly. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Yes. Now, ben, uh, what are your first challenges that you, you face in, in Pathways and share it uh, and tell us how you overcome that? Ben? I, I think um, the important thing is to encourage your members to use it. Fortunately, in most of my clubs, uh, the, <laughs> I have several clubs, uh, most of my clubs, the members are quite proactive in pursuing the pathways and handing in the uh, projects as well. Um, so, but I heard that for a lot of other clubs, there are lots of challenges to encourage some of the more seasoned member to to use Pathway. My suggestion is, I think right now is a very good um, good opportunity. If you have a spare mask, then if you say, if you start doing pathway, then I will give you my spare mask. And then, yeah, it will be a good <laughs> good um, thing to do. I don't know if it counts as bribing, but uh, yeah. So I think for me, doing the projects are uh, not difficult. Uh, sometimes it's maybe a little more difficult in um, having people to understand the project with you because it's quite new to everyone. So for example, if you're doing a quite new project like the one I mentioned, 
then it is a, a bit of a challenge to get the person to know what the, like the evaluator to know what is the criteria for completing. But otherwise, I think it's quite, um, yeah, it's just more of a challenge for, for um, to encourage people to start using it, especially if they're quite used to doing it without the online system. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Ben. Like for me, uh, I have three challenges I face in Pathways. The first challenge is very simple. I do not know which path to choose. Very obvious question. Because there's so many paths to choose from. There are 10 paths. And then it's like, oh, dynamic leadership. That's effective coaching. Oh, there is a persuasive influence. Which path is suitable for me? So what I did for the rest of this, that month itself is reading on all the descriptions divided into different paths to identify myself which path is really helpful for me. Like, do I really need to learn about my niche online meetings? Do I need to learn about humor, etc.? At that time, there's no humor path. So I was actually questioning myself which path to choose from and how you can recommend to your member. So that's actually a way to, to solve that problem is that, uh, the, like for example, presentation mastery is a commonly chosen path because there's no leadership projects unless you specifically pick for that. So presentation mastery to me is more for contest. So I can actually go and uh, ensure that if there are any members who have been a season toast master for a long time, usually we recommend P presentation mastery because it's actually similar to our traditional program. Vocal variety, our our body gesture, etc. Everything can be found there. So, and then I find out maybe I want to have some more challenge because I've been a Toastmaster for 13 years. Cannot just let my years to be wasted. So I choose something which is more tough, which is innovative planning, which I have to do HPI at the end, high performance leadership. So that will be the first challenge. Now, the second challenge that I do face is I have to do an icebreaker over and over again. Because if you do more than one path, the second path, you have to start from icebreaker all the way again. And how do I overcome that is that do not do the same icebreaker. Just find a new topic, treat it as a new start with a new mentality. Then you'll be able to experience that. This time, when you do the second path, you experience something that's different from your first path. So I highly recommend when you do different projects, starting from mentality, is there anything that you want to challenge yourself on? Is there anything that you want to build that connection with the audience that you have been longing for? So I will actually look at those two elements. Now, finally, the last challenge that I do face in Pathways and the most critical one, as mentioned by a couple of members, is that I have to go on the base cam, click on the base cam, stop the pop up blocker, click on the educational curriculum, go and find the pre my project page, download it. So you sound like it's like a tedious steps to do so. So for me to, to solve that problem is that sometimes uh, I will actually download everything at one go and then print it out for myself. Uh, that way I actually can keep track of my speech materials and also do my projects effectively. So you can actually try those methods, maybe it helps everyone. Now, we are nearly to kind of the end, but we want to ask like, if there is one or two, two sentence to, to share uh, your positive experience about Pathways. Can you give us two sentences as a quote to let us remember for the rest of our Toastmaster journey? For quick thinkers, I would definitely like, like to ask our Molly to start off with two quotes that you will think is relevant to our Pathway experience. Molly? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry. Good one. Um, the, the code that I would use is um, mm, just try, have fun. Yep. I think it's very important that we um, have fun in Toastmasters and uh, do, when we are doing uh, delivering our speech, you know, think of a fun speech, fun topic to deliver it. So you may, say, you, may, you, you may start with something that you like 
right? So that you like to do, you the thing that you want to inspire the people. If you find as a speaker, if you if you find it useful, if if you find it fun, the very high chance that you will the I the audience will also find it fun and interesting too. So just try try to have fun. Basically, that's it. Thank you. That's a very positive spirit. Have fun in pathways. Open up your mind to try new things. Now let's welcome our Irene to share two quotes that you think is relevant and, and memorable for our pathway experience. Share two what? Two quotes or two sentences related. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I mute yourself first. You have muted yourself again. No. Okay. Uh, the first thing I like about Pathways is that it is more comprehensive than the, uh, the original one because uh, when you click into a button and then more materials will come out. It is one, two, three, four, and then you click one and two and three, four, and then all the things come up. And also I, I like the videos that is embedded into the, into the projects and when they, they give you real examples, how to do an interview, how to be a mentor, things like that. So I think uh, the pathways is fun for me and I will continue to do it and uh, redo it until I learn more. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you very much for Irene. Next, we would like to okay. welcome Ben to share two quotes about pop experience as a whole as a positive experience. I think um, just have fun, don't worry. Keep calm and don't worry, be happy. And uh, do, your, do your project, submit it and have fun with your friend. Thank you very much, Ben. So for, for me, if I want to share two quotes or two sentences with everyone would be that Pathways is just a two. It's more about what you want to get out of it. So that's my first sentence, really about what you want to get out from the two. The second thing is about Pathways is really just explore with an open mind. When you explore with an open mind, you get to learn a lot more things from Pathways. It's just like there's a memory technique that we are usually doing in the past. When I play something that I have been used to, I will try to forget about it first because I want to forget all the things that I've learned before to embrace new things and do the comparison between. That way you can actually learn more things than before. So that's usually what I do. So Pathways has been a very pleasant experience for me uh, over the past one and a half year struggled but then i find it's very rewarding now finally for our panelists is that i i know that you guys have shared your two quotes and and tips already is that if you have a guide if you are like you have a new member just beside you right now doesn't know about pathways at all now is there any way that you can help them choose their first path help them choose that first part. Give you some seconds to think about it first. I can start off first. If I have a new member just beside me and I have to give them some sentence or some codes to choose their own path, I will ask them three simple questions. The first one is, what do you want to become in one year's time? Okay, that will be a very clear indicator. Oh, I want to be a very professional speaker. Okay, that, that depends on the response. Two is that, do you want to focus more on leadership or do you want to focus more on public speaking? Because that's related to the path. And finally, for a new member itself is that, do you, do you want to train your current skills or do you want to learn new skills? These are the three simple questions that I will ask. Then I will recommend the path that I think is customized for them because the first question allows them to identify and visualize themselves. The second question is allowing them to know like what their current needs would be. And the final question would be really on different 
different mechanisms that I, I can really help them to coach them their own power valve. Because power phase other than 11 power valve itself is about forging your own power valve. So that's like my clear indicator for that. So now I would like to pass the stage to Ben, who is eating sometimes. That's something. Already. I don't know why you're eating. <laughs> ben? I think you answered the question perfectly already. I don't think I have anything to add. Okay. <laughs> but you still have to say something. <laughs> Well, how about this? Uh, this is Molly. How about this? Then, uh, how about offering yourself as a mentor of the new member, right? Uh, so, so whatever path they chose, they choose, just help them, right? Remember, every path level one are the same anyway. So even for example, if I'm working on that traditional Chinese path, I can offer help to a new member who select another path, another path which is different from me. Offer yourself as a mentor, that would also help a new member. Mm. Thank you, Molly, for sharing that. That's very useful because all the paths, you learn paths, the first level is the same. It's the same, there's no changes. Only when it's level two, it starts to have some changes. Level three, it starts to change direct, dynamically from the mandatory requirements. The required path, uh, required projects in every path is different except one path, which is called strategic relationship. Okay, so finally, for Irene, if you have the new member beside you right now, how would you give them some last tips and advice? I, mean, I will no. tell them I have I have done can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I will tell him or her that I have gone through different paths and the first two paths are the same, exactly the same, each one. And so what she I think she knows best which one uh, which path I mean which skill she wants to to embark on to uh, to to do better? So I will ask her first of all: Do you want to do to be a better speaker or to be a good leader? And then, then I would point to her which path is more on that on that skill, and then she can choose herself. But of course, there is an assessment uh, 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 in the pathways that she has to do. And from that, she can choose. Thank you very much, Irene. Now is the question for the floor. So I would like to welcome our question master, Mona, to actually ask some questions related. Is, is there any questions that is from our chat box? Hey, um, so thank you all the panelists for the sharing today. And actually we have one question from the floor which is from one of our club officers asking that their club have a relatively low pathways adoption rate. So what they can do to encourage or promote their pathway programs to their new current program members. Would Molly like to answer that? Yeah, I would, I would like to try. First thing uh, we now, so low passion, uh, pathway adoption rate. So number one, it is, so I, I just assume the member has not chosen the path, okay? So first thing is, uh, look around yourself, the couple of us, have we chosen a path? So historical data tell us that the more active the couple of us are, in pathways, the member will be more active. So remember, yourself has to be a role model. You have to start your path to so, so that you can promote it to the cup member. So first thing, choose your path yourself. Second thing is uh, making a celebration. For example, what I always promote is how about having a icebreaker party in your club? So let's say you fix a meeting date. It could be an online meeting. It could, it could be a face-to-face -face meeting. That, for example, on this day, everybody is invited back to the club to deliver the icebreaker. So show some commitment. That icebreaker party could be most of, uh, could be the cup officer as well. So some, so some commitment, so some fun, everyone fun in launching the pathway to your club. 
everybody come to learn, everybody come on to have fun too. So this is my suggestion on how you can um, start with pathway in your own club. Try it yourself, have a party, make it fun. For, for me to add on a bit to Molly is that from the icebreaker party and stuff, you can actually meet up in a, in a nice restaurant, for example, and then do a toast or do a short speech. Make it fun as usual and then make that interactive too. It, anywhere is a stage. So you can actually practice all those. Thank you, Jim, for the spotlighting. <laughs> and most importantly is about your mentality, whether you're willing to try. You need to build up that willingness to try for anything in our live journey. So Mona, uh, do you have any other yeah. questions? Um, I think that's the questions for now we have, um, but later on we'll have a short break and people can still pop up some questions during the break. I'm sure that the panelists will still help us to answer those questions. Actually, yeah. I know that there's one person that's wanting to ask a question. I got it from the WhatsApp message just now. Okay. Uh, let's welcome Tina to ask a question. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Otherwise we can't hear you. <laughs> oh yeah, hello Hi. Dave, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Oh, so interesting. Hello everyone, this Hi. is the first time I uh, used, uh, I mean, uh, I, I was in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the Zoom uh, before, but that's the first time like a live, I mean, technologies do change our lives a lot and then Kind of like they have no boundary, whatever that happened in Hong Kong. So, I mean, this is amazing. For me, it's really new. Okay, my question. Uh, so I, I want to ask a question, isn't it? So uh, besides pathway, can I ask something else in here? Uh, now is a pathway session. If you want to ask questions, you can ask it later on. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I I I I joined the pathway. Um, I started as well, and then we have a several uh, meeting, and we have a, like a in 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 our own clubs. But we are very lucky to have a very senior member know about the pathway to introduce to us to the to the new members, and then uh, she's Winnie Winnie Low, and then uh, we have conduct field time. Then I find it's a very useful way to to use pathway. And then for me, although, you know, I'm in here for a long time, but still, Puff is a new thing for me. But I noticed that all the things have become more well-organized and then more professional. And, and I think if we are going the right way on this pathway anyway. So I would encourage everyone to work hard on it. Like, I mean, not really to work hard. Life is already hard enough. So we can work nice and easy and to participate to learn the new thing from pathway then so i'm i'm ready to learn thank you aaron thank you very much tina i really for your... work i really work okay i'm glad yep thank you very much for your encouragement for the wise words i was still looking forward to the question though but it's still okay but yeah so any other questions from the floor before we close this session and then we will take a short little break before we move on to our third section, led by Yuki Wong and also Sophia, which is our division Z director. Any other questions before we take our short little break? Not at the moment. Okay. Thank you. So if that's the case, then I'll pass the stage back to Armona to, to announce the break to be started. So welcome, Wanda. Yeah, thank you. Um, so now we're going on to a 10 minutes break. And after break, we'll go to the workshop session led by Yuki Wan and Sophia Ao. Uh, uh, both are our Division Z Director and our area direct, G4 Area Director for 2016 and 17. Um, so now we'll have a 10 minutes break. Thank you. Sure. So now uh, we'll come back from the break just now. And I think everyone had a great talk. Um, now we're going to the next workshop session leading by Yuki Wong, the DTM and the G4 Area Director for 2016 and 2017. And another lead speaker for this session is Sophia Ao. She's ACB, ALS and the Division Z Director. And their session is going to talk about ways to solve club challenges. So let's welcome Sophia and Yuki. Sophia and Yuki. Yeah, I can see Yuki now. Hello, Yuki. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello. 
Your mic is not Hello, working. Hello, everyone. Oh, better. Can you hear me? Hi, Sophia. How, hi, Yuki. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Mona and Maggie. Hi. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. So, hello everyone. I'm Sophia Out, the current division set director. And this session will be held by me and also Yuki Won. Yuki, are you here? She's there. Good. So, let me play. Share with you. So, this session will be about club difficulty challenge and solutions. Can you can you all see the slides? Yes. Yes. Oh wonderful. So before we invite some club officer to share their story and challenging about their club. I would like to share my own story in Toastmaster. So I joined Toastmaster like in 2015, like four years ago, five, four to five years ago. So I joined after graduation. And I helped and participated in speeches and I participate in leadership role as well. So what I found is I will always have a wish I wish that if I were a student or university student, I can participate in Toastmaster, I could have a more benefit from it. So ladies and gentlemen, now you're a student, it is very excellent chance for you to learn how to be a good speaker and good communicator at your age and at, at this stage. So, Although we are facing a lot of difficulty last year in terms of the protest, and now we are facing a global difficulty about the virus, but still it is the time for us to learn how to be a good leader to tackle the possible difficulty that we have. So this session will be talk about how to fix the challenge and find the right solution. So Yuki, you would like to share something about your background in Toastmaster? Oh, sure. Uh, so uh, you can all hear me, right? Uh, after I take off the mic. <laughs> now we can hear you. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, so, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Yuki Wong. My current role is a public speaker, a presentation trainer, and a professional MC. So, it's all started, I think I joined Toastmaster in uh, year 2013. Uh, before that, I actually heard about Toastmaster, but uh, I wasn't interested in joining at all because uh, I think we are all busy already. And then it was because of my bank's training that I got into Toastmaster and then later decide to make Toastmaster my full-time job uh, in daytime. So I think uh, the work so-called workshop today uh, is more about uh, sharing our previous experience and also the time where we experienced SARS because uh, me and Sophia are a little bit older than some of you. So we got to experience SARS the first hand uh, as a student. So we don't want to share what happened at that time. So uh, Sophia, I think you can continue with uh, the benefits and uh, your latest life so that you can, we can just uh, jump with me and then you, yeah. Yeah, please. All right. So talking about the benefits. So actually my story is quite similar with Yuki's one because after the graduation, I came back to Hong Kong, I searched public speaking online. So everyone was referred by a friend, you know, and got into Toastmaster meeting by referral. 
actually, I, I was typing, I was searching online, public speaking, and Toastmaster popped up. So I went to the meeting, host some meeting on my own. And so far, it has been a wonderful experience for me because I met a lot of friends and I built up the friendship in Toastmaster. Also, I learned from a lot of star speaker. For example, we have a lot of world-class public speaking trainer and speaker. So now we would like to share some tips or some insight about how to tackle the difficulty that we face now. So the next slide is about what is a leader. I think everyone would have different definition of this sentence, right? What is a leader? In my mind, actually, to be a leader, you have to be smart, right? Also, actual leadership is about solving a problem, especially in, in the new year. At this moment, we have faced a lot of difficulty and challenge. How to solve it? And you will be the one to stand up and solve the problem. So in our student club, we have four difficulty about the education, about the people, about the administration, about the intake quality. So we will discuss these challenges. So first of all, if we want to have a healthy club, how can we solve it? When we look at our program, we will see we have a, a lot of points to achieve, right? And as Agnes mentioned in the MOT, so if we evaluate by those criteria about education, membership growth, the training and administration. And I can understand a lot of student club we are facing some issue about the membership growth. So this time I will share some tips about how to grow your leadership. So first of all, I would like to ask any club officer or any club are facing some problem about membership. Hello? I think it, it the membership for a student club would go down during a summer uh, during the summer holiday. Mm -hmm. That that's one mm -hmm. issue. And um, like personally, um, as a club president, an issue our club has always had is we are worried about who is going to take up the exco role next year. So I mm -hmm. that would be an interesting issue to share thoughts about. So about the membership and the people to encourage our ex -com, our member to take up the ex -com role. Yeah, generally they're nervous. They're like, oh, I'm not prepared for this, you know. Mm -hmm. That's very good questions because some, we have a lot of members in our club. Some are encouraged to take up the role and some are don't. And that's why we need to have some training for our club officer for some COT, right? We learn about the skills and knowledge, how to work and perform good in our role. And also, I think it, it is very important to recruit more members in our student club. And most of them I heard is some of them, they are worried about the price. Anyone in this room, like as a club officer, you heard about this, these rejections because uh, the membership price is so expensive. I cannot afford it. Oh, Anyone heard of? Yes, yes. Yeah, I got quite a lot of uh, uh, such events uh, from last year, September, because like it, during our demo meeting, we got a lot of. Uh, interested member uh, potential members but once they heard of the membership fee most of them didn't join our club in the end 
So this is quite a great challenge and problem that our club faced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So Alex, I agree with the point. Especially in Postmaster is student club. They don't have money, that much money because they are not working at all, right? So the first issue is about how can they pay for the membership? So I, in my division, I had a student club. At the very beginning, they don't have, they don't, they have like less than five members. And after that, after, after some strategy they made, they managed to get nine to 10 members until now. So it is what I share with them is basically, I want you to ask you some questions. If you see the iPhone, I believe a lot of people using the iPhone, right? And some students, they are using the iPhone, right? So for one single iPhone, the cost, the price is about like six until 10,000, right? 100. Why did they buy it? Even the iPhone is so expensive, right? 6,000 until 10,000. Because they see the value behind the brand. They see the value behind the product. And Postmaster, it is the same. We must let the students see the value behind Postmaster meeting. What, they, what can they get from a four year membership? For example, the case that I help with is they charge 800 Hong Kong dollar for a full time, four year membership. It costs the same as an iPhone. Some people pay for it, some people don't. Why? So we need to work on and educate our visitor or our member about the value behind the postmaster systems about the pathway, about the leadership. So when we promote for the value, we can do like this. For the left hand side, it is, it is the price for the iPhone, right? With 800 something Hong Kong dollar, we can buy maybe some part of the iPhone. However, if with the full price of 800, we can get a full year membership. For students, most of them, they are interested in having a good CV. So we can educate our member from this angle. After four or four years of studying, what job you want to get? If you want to compete with other people, what is needed? A good CV. So Postmaster is able to offer you a good CV that allows you to get your dream drop. So that is the angle that we deliver to our student. Sophia, also, Sophia, just yes. an interruption. You, you have lots of conversations in the chat box. You have a look though. <laughs> okay. There, there are lots of interactions about the current issues that they were facing and what are the problems and we can actually solve that too. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, um, this is Yuki. I think I can uh, list a little bit on the, yeah, on the questions that have been raised in the chat box that includes uh, no number of members during the summer. Uh, they are not willing to take up XCOM role. The conversion ratio of guests into members is very low. Uh, members or, or potential members think we are too formal or English public speaking is too academic. 
So I hope uh, I've uh, done a good summary of the things that we have discussed. So the, the main issue is, uh, since I run a business, so the main question I always like to ask my colleagues or ask my clients is that, what kind of people do you want to attract? Like what kind of people do you want to attract? Like one product cannot um, attract all people, all kinds of customers. So just now I saw uh, Joy said they did an escape room, right? Escape room, right? So there are a lot of things that different Toastmaster Club do in order to attract the type of people they want to get. And uh, after all, the core of Toastmaster is about the meeting quality. If we go back to the essential, it's just like how come people would like to buy concert ticket, even though it costs a lot, right? So it's all about how good the club meeting you are running. So like ask yourself, President, so are you running a good club meeting? Like good club meeting that includes the welcoming, how you host the visitor, uh, did you do the follow-up? Are the speeches attractive? Uh, have you recognized the new member that joined at that meeting? So if you have done all that elements well, it's quite hard not to attract that member, really. Because uh, previously I was the uh, club mentor for PolyU, and uh, we can see if you got a really good meeting, with say uh, potential members and at that club meeting, we got really good guest speaker, they immediately sign up. So after all, it's about the core of that meeting, really. So any other question that I haven't covered because I think I've jotted down uh, all the questions just now and I, and I hope that that experience that I share can answer that. So we cannot cater all sort of requests. After all, it's about Presidents, what kind of people do you want from your club? Yeah. I agree with Yuki about activity that we can provide to our students. For example, some social event apart from some academic stuff for our students. And I would suggest our student club, they may consider have a yearly calendar because different students, they may have different thinking about the reasons why they join Toastmaster. Some people may join it because they want a friendship. Some people join because they want to polish their CV. And some people simply want to, you know, just train their public speaking skill. So different members, they have different angles. So by being a yearly calendar, for example, we have some hiking, we have some Major activity. We have some Christmas party. We have speech craft program. So we can list the, um, the variety of activities that we can provide for the student that can attract them to join our club. So we have the social part and also we have the learning part, the leadership part. So it can attract more students to join. So any other questions about the challenges? Hello? I think there's a member from CTU that wants to say something. Ophelia, right? Yeah. Hello. Hi, uh, so I'm Ophelia from CTU Toastmasters Club. Uh, I'd like to share my experience of having a, uh, of saving our club from extension at that time. So the story was back in 2019 when we discovered that our club had that our club members have dropped from uh, from tw from 20 something to just oh, just not enough 10 people so at the time uh we actually had a we actually had a whatsapp meeting and at the end we also we also tried to seek help from the university departments uh previously our president had seek 
seek uh, support from her department in which they yield no results. Uh, as for me, uh, during uh, during last year July, I actually I actually went to my department, the Department of English, uh, to seek help, and at that time they kindly they kindly accepted accept my request. So now, so now that I've returned from my exchange trip and I've taken and I've resumed my positions, should I need to inform? Should I need to? To, should I inform them and ask them to continue to support the activities in our club? Thanks. Hello, thank you, Ophelia. So I, I would say I clearly understand your case because <laughs> your club is under my divisions. So referring to your questions, should I keep contact with the department, right? The answer is yes, because I remember last time you shared with us, you contact the Department of English and they are willing to support mm -hmm. on booking the room for our meeting and also they are willing to be a language evaluator for the meeting, right? Therefore, I strongly suggest you to send an email to the professor and saying that we will continue the meeting. The only difference is now we will hold the meeting online. So you would encourage them to join the Zoom meeting with, with all of you and be the language evaluator for you guys. So please send an email and tell the professor that City Toastmasters still are running the meeting, but this time it is online. And it is a very good case because I I know that some student club, some of them they are supported by the university and some of don't some of them are not. So it is very important to reach out to your professor or a department of English or department of marketing or business to seek for help. If you are adding value to the student in university, I believe the professor or the staff are willing to help their student to grow and learn. So that is the case. Now, now we have Herman that actually wants to give some comments as well. So let's welcome Herman. Hi, Ophelia. My humble comments is if you're going to discuss with Department of English anyways, uh, I would strongly recommend that they, you invite uh, three of them to actually join the club and have those three uh, faculty or department members as permanent members of the club. The, the reason of doing it is because uh, every six months we have to uh, review uh, the club membership and according to Toastmasters International uh, Renewal Requirement, uh, we have to have at least three existing members to renew in order to have the club to continue. Uh, if we do not have three members to renew the membership, um, the club is unfortunately uh, going to run into the risk of being suspended. Uh, so I'm just uh, talking from the point of view of um, continuously, um, you know, uh, ensuring the club uh, is going to survive in the long run. Um, another benefit of getting them to actually join the club is, uh, as Sophia said, uh, you can always have uh, some permanent uh, language evaluator or someone else to take the meeting roles. So um, if you are going to speak with uh, the faculty members, please do mention that to them. Um, that would be the most effective and efficient way to ensure our club uh, your club is going to survive in the long run. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Herman. I think it's, it is a good advice. And I also make a slide on where to recruit members. For students, we have orientation day, registration day, so we could have a pool during the day to recruit some new members. Also, we can have 
we can reach out to the department of engage marketing or else to seek for their help. And Herman said that it is workable if we invite some professor to join the Toastmaster Club as well. And the society, social media, email lists, and friends. So we have different channels to find new members for our student club. So Olivia. Hello, Olivia, is it helpful for your question? So please contact the professor okay. and invite them to join the club. Okay, no problem. I'll take this to everyone in the committee and we'll have a discussion after this session. Well done, thank you. So are, are there any questions about the challenges and the solutions? I think maybe they, they have some sharings really, like you know, like Tokyo and Joy, they had they have some they have some sharings from their club as well that may be helpful for everyone to learn from as well. Yeah, excellent. You want to welcome Joy or Tokyo first? Can we have Joy to share that place? Okay. Hey guys, so can you hear me? No? Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, cool. Yes, we can. So um and maybe I'll tell you a little bit about our club at HKU and how we got through this crazy academic year. So when our club ended last year, we were um we were desperate for membership. Um because we wanted to meet a certain DCP goal. And um the the reason why we focus on meeting these DCP goals is because when Hong Kong U sees DCP goals, they give us money. Like it's, it's bargaining power, it's negotiation. So that's something you always want to think about, especially if you want to work with your university and get subsidies with them. So last year, we reached out to not just one department. We did go to the Department of English, just like... Uh, Ophelia mentioned with CDU, but we reached out to multiple departments for support. So in our university, we have what's known as Common Core, which are mandatory courses that everybody does. But there are also a department that organizes various public speaking events or like invites guest speakers from all around the world. So basically general knowledge kind of department. Um, and I know the professor quite well. So because of our personal interactions in the past, he said he was willing to help me out. I also reached out to our university's vice president, who is very keen on experiential learning because HKU is like, we're, we aren't gonna just learn in the classroom, we learn outside the classroom. And um, like reading through his biography and his background, I was like, okay, he's, if we can sell this to him, we are gonna get rich. So <laughs> I, I tried to convince him. And the third department we reached out to was a Center for Applied English Studies. And we kind of created a deal with them where if one department, contributed one dollar the other two would have to contribute one dollar as well so Whoa. that's how we got subsidies for our <laughs> semester but like one of the issues we have encountered is they said you can only use this subsidy for marketing for like subsidizing membership fees for like the going to Maoming if that really happens or paris but you can't use it on food and drinks so like that that was one drawback but still like to to have money for marketing is already a really big deal so that's one suggestion don't be afraid to reach out to different people and think about what would increase your bargaining power in these kind of situations how would a professor agree how can you sell it to them imagine elevator pitch you're only meeting this professor for 30 seconds you got to sell the idea what are you going to do so that's the first thing the second thing, and this is advice that is quite specific to presidents, is to 
make your team a part of the process. I personally feel like my team has been really important to me because they are very supportive people. And last year, um, I, it was the third year of my university and I, I went on exchange. So I didn't really know what happened in our club until I came back in the second semester and people are like, oh my God, Joy, this is a mess. So I sat down with them, I asked them, okay, what went well, what didn't go well, and what are we gonna create for our club together? But we didn't just focus on group goals as a club, but we also focus on individual goals. And this goes out to presidents out there who want to motivate their ex-co members. Sometimes you feel like you're the president and oh my gosh, all the workload is just on me, right? No, you gotta understand what your ex-co's goals are, what they want to achieve through their ex-co responsibilities. And as a result of that, you delegate tasks in supporting their own goals. Like I met ex-co members that were like, okay, I'm here to improve my public speaking skills. I'm like, okay, so when we assign tasks, that's something I will take into consideration. Some people were here for marketing. Some people were here for leadership. Some people just wanted stuff on their CV. But you as a president have to let your team know that you're there to support them. And you have to involve them in every single process of the journey. Um, I guess uh, some other suggestions might be to host social events. I think one of the reasons I was drawn to Toastmasters is because of the friendships. You know, in, in journalism, I'm a journalism student, you don't meet your classmates very often, but I would meet my Toastmasters very often. And like in a big university campus, it's good to have friends you see often. So we would hold badminton matches, we would play mahjong together, we would, you know, like my local friends would introduce me to mahjong and I would teach them how to play like an Indian board game. The beauty of our club is that it's very international, even though there are exchange students coming in and out, but the fact that it's an international club is what, what sells us, you know? Otherwise, many of the local clubs at HKU are just local clubs and they're just local students. The exchange students don't know where to go, so they can come to us if they want to make friends. So that's something you may want to think, uh, may want to take into consideration. And yeah, I guess just never be afraid to try new stuff and, and take risks. Like we've gone through our crazy experiences, console, uh, contests being canceled twice and <laughs> holding a comedy workshop that got canceled and a public speaking workshop that got canceled. But you just always got to think outside the box and, and never give up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yuki, I can't hear you. I think you can hear me now. Uh, I guess it's about finding your club. Yuki, your voice is too soft. Yeah. yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah much okay, better. We can, we can. Cool. <laughs> so I think it's about finding your club's uh, unique selling point. Because uh, there are a lot of clubs out there and people don't know the differentiation. So you need to find what's so special about your club so that people who think you are special will come. So it's just like relationship, right? So uh, I think Joy has done her part. So can we hear from Tokyo as well? Yep. Uh, I guess our club has like four key challenges. The main, ca main challenges of our club is that our club is actually labeled as illegal in PolyU. So that means whatever promotions we do, whatever activities we do, if the school discover it, then we break the school law and maybe somehow we receive penalties or something like that. So we we'll actually we actually did everything else secretly on maybe on our Facebook page, through WhatsApp, through email, because our because if PolyU discovers that we will get some punishment. So this is uh, a key challenge. And I think the second challenge is we actually receive no support from PolyU or uh, no support from any departments because we are not under the student union. So they're not willing to sponsor us. But however, after several negotiations, 
some of the departments, like the English department, uh, they actually willing to like uh, help us to book a venue, and that to let us to do the meetings. But however, uh, you know, Poly experience like some kind of uh, protest. Everything is under maintenance, and we cannot actually book any rooms. So it's actually uh, a special problem for Poly students. And we actually have some problems in like ex -com members, the number of ex -com executive committee members and also the members. Because um, from now uh, till now, we actually got only two executive committee members, only me and the PR, Joyce, uh, which makes us the workload is really great. We need to invite guest speakers, we need to promote the activities, and then we divide the workload between me and Joyce, and we actually did a lot. And only two people is not enough to like complete the work, but we still try very hard. And lastly, the, the problem is we are really low in members. Uh, like a few, months, a few months ago, we actually have uh, lower than eight members, and now we have eight members, uh, because the problem is from the last executive committee, they have eight members in total. And then like half of them are not willing to uh, renew the membership. And then turn out we only got four. So this is, a, uh, this is another problem. But every problem I actually mentioned, they are solved already or they are uh, solving in progress. <laughs> I, I tried very hard and experience in like uh, some... <laughs> I, I don't man, man, mental stuff. I I tried really hard and then to solve to negotiate with almost every department in PolyU, <laughs> sending emails to every professor that I know to get help from them, to register under SU even though you know we are uh, during class suspension. Uh, I tried everything else and then the problems almost solved. But. Uh, one interesting thing to say is we actually got 30k in our bank account because we are under SU previously, but now we are not. But a bad news is that we cannot get back those 30k because we are like disbanded. SU said that we are disbanded, so we cannot get those 30k. We cannot use those money for sponsorship. But I think that is not a major problem. At least the um, four problems I mentioned. Uh, are solved. So the lesson I learned is the problems really sound so difficult to solve or they are impossible to solve at first. But as long as you deposit time and then you deposit your effort to try to try every solution, the problem will solve one day. It depends on when the problem will solve. The problem will solve like very quickly. So uh, this is my sharing. And actually I got one question. Uh, I, I am recruiting my next executive committee and now I get three and maybe I'm predicting at most I will get five. And I think it is, the number is still very low. And uh, I, wanna, I want an advice. Should I recruit some very uh, should I request some potential members? They're still guests yet. They may be joining our meeting for once only. Should I offer this like position for them and the opportunity to them to try to become a, our next executive committee? Hmm. 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 My, my personal view is that you have to find someone with the passion and also the skills these two are equally important if uh, he or she isn't passionate about toastmaster or isn't about a relationship development then don't take him or her in because he or she will leave very soon and next thing is uh, skills that means at least he or she can run the meeting alone can recruit member, can have the power to recruit member, can negotiate to get money. So basically, if you don't have that passion and skills, you better not force that person to be in just because of relationship. Otherwise, you two will be unfriending each other very soon.
I see. Okay. For real, for real, for real. No joke, no joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yes, yes. I agree. It is about the willingness of the member. If he or she is willing to take the job, he will find a way to complete the task. If he is not willing to do it, you can't force anyone to do such task. Willingness is the most important element that you consider whether you invite a new member to be an expert. It is, it is. Actually, running Toastmaster, being the president, is like running um, a family, a relationship, or a company. So you have to think about uh, the decision that you make, how you deal with the people, and also the implication. Uh, sometimes I think tough people will last no matter how tough the situation is. So just let us know if you have uh, any question. Uh, it doesn't have to be here. It can be privately. You can just find us. We are really happy to help. Uh, no matter it's a mental health or a physical support or you need any speakers, we are really willing to help as long as you voice it out and let us know. So don't trap yourself in the corner. Please don't. Um, whoops. Okay, some, some, someone uh, actually just raised a question. So our club tried mass recruitment like email booth poster before, but failed to attract. What promotion methods can we use instead? Alex, you, you, Alex, you asked this question, right? Yes, he does. Mm. My personal view is, uh, do you buy the stuff if you receive a mass email? If you receive a mass email uh, about, say, some accessories or some computer products, will you buy it if you receive a mass email? Probably not, right? So uh, mass doesn't mean the probability is higher, right? So, I think I can do some sharing here. Yes, please. Um, so uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things we were worried about was obviously promotion in the beginning of the semester. But the thing you can start out with is look for as many ways as you can to promote, as many events as possible, and who your target audience is. So for us, it was um, a few local students, but we're focusing on the internationals because they don't generally have many friends and they're looking for a club where there are more international students. So we booked a booth at what at what's known as the local you know, non-local orientation fair. So there would be non-local students attending their official like inauguration ceremony in the university and we kept our booth like right outside so you imagine a hall of 20,000 students coming to Hong Kong coming to our university for the first time and they just walk out and like the first booth is Toastmasters so you got to plan these things well you got to plan your location you got to plan your events and you got to take advantage of all these events that are going to happen at your university the second part is take advantage of the relationships with the departments you have at your university. Now we have three departments, so three of them can send mass emails on behalf of us. So you keep got like, and you got to maintain a good relationship with these departments themselves. Like say, for example, right now, one of the departments is hosting an online conference and it's about science. Now, not many of our club members are science students and like if you ask me I couldn't care less like I'm not going to join but because we want to maintain a good relationship <laughs> with this department we're like you know what it's about it's about public speaking and if we have some science student that wants to join very good they can finish a pathways project in the process but because we are nice people and we want to get keep getting money from this department, we will promote it on behalf of them. So it's about maintaining these long-term relationships. And my final tip here is communication. It's about the language that you use. I'm a journalism student. I can tell you that communication is super, super important. So don't be afraid to sell your, your point or sell your club in, in a creative way. Like at on that day, I remember we had a booth across us with like flashy lights and they were playing loud music and I'm like, oh my God, we're in trouble. Nobody's going to notice us. So what I did was like I held a copy of Toastmasters magazine and I was like, 
if you join our club, you can be on the cover of this magazine. And like people started running in towards our club. Like to this day, people judge me for that. Like people are like, wait, you're the person who promised me I would be on this magazine. Um, but they still remember it. And that's why they remember our club. So you should never be afraid of people judging you because as long as you bring your point home, as long as it's memorable, that's what matters. We also have Herman also to share some, some <laughs> thoughts, Herman. Hey everyone, I think Joy had pretty much covered most of the things that I want to talk about. But uh, I just want to make a few quick remarks on membership equipment. Um, well, first of all, Alex, uh, just put yourself in other shoes. What, how would you react when you receive a very long uh, boring mass email? Um, chances are you are just going to ignore it and you are just going to delete it and you are just going to forget about it. Um, so um, just to uh, reflect on what Joy had mentioned, uh, I would definitely recommend um, you to conduct um, the membership equipment more in a relationship approach. Uh, your club has around 20 members, right? Uh, if I don't uh, forget, uh, if I remember correctly, you probably have around 20 members, right? Um, essentially, the 20 members are actually a relationship manager um, within Hang Seng U for Toastmasters. Um, and instead of sending out mass emails, uh, these 20 members are spread across different faculties within the university. And uh, they can definitely do some one-on-one -on -one uh, to their classmates, um, to have some chat with them, um, get to understand, you know, their challenges in terms of um, oral communication and, and leadership. Um, try to sell it in an approach that uh, you are trying to help them and which is why you are going to invite them to attend a Toastmasters meeting rather than sending our email to them saying that, oh, please help me uh, attend the Toastmasters meeting. Um, I wouldn't put Toastmasters uh, in a very, very, I wouldn't quote it in a very, very early stage because um, in, when explaining what Toastmasters is, chances are we do spend some time to explain um, clearly what it is, uh, what it is about, uh, but rather I would uh, focus it from a neat perspective. Um, how do we want to help our friends? and uh, how do they realize the benefit from Toastmasters. Uh, if, uh, and then we'll just invite them to the gathering, just say that, you know, uh, we will have a fun gathering um, and uh, you have something to learn from the gathering and you have a lot of fun. Uh, would you like to, you know, take a chance and uh, come with me uh, to our next gathering uh, before you say the word Toastmasters. Uh, so all in all, uh, all I want to say is, uh, mass email is like cold calling. Um, I would say over 90% it's not going to work, uh, but rather one-on-one -on -one invitation uh, focused on, you know, prospective members needs, um, doing it in a more personal approach, uh, do it less formally, uh, would be more um, efficient and effective in terms of recruiting potential members. That's all for me. Yeah, I actually have one point to add. Uh, I actually th I suggest Alex can try more methods. Uh, I, uh, I have experienced the same situation before, but I try to, like, uh, I do class visits to visit those, like, uh, 100 people lectures. And then they, uh, they like the student majoring in marketing or in any business subjects, or they're majoring in uh, humanities or languages. Uh, they are usually very into like public speaking and they're good at it and they are somehow they're interested to public speaking or maybe I tell them you can practice your academic presentation in our club and then those people will be very excited because they got practicing opportunities so that they will join and then after they join us I'll tell them like except from practicing your presentation you can actually like you can polish your uh, leadership skills you can practice pl English public speaking something like that and then they will be more attracted to this and then uh, one more point is that uh, I, since I don't have mass email, I use another thing is that I tell the professors that, uh, that I'm familiar with to tell them to try to sell this thing in his class or her class or try to send emails to 
uh, their students. So uh, I will try to spread the news as far as possible so everyone can get to know uh, Toastmasters, but try to make it like uh, engage uh, your potential members, not by English public speaking, but by something fun and interesting maybe. Uh, I try to attract my members by um, New Year party. I tell them there's a New Year party in our club, especially to those international students. And they are like, really, uh, it sounds interesting and they really want to join us. And then we make the New Year party, uh, we course over with Toastmaster. In the New Year party, we will have some table topic session. But I don't tell them that's table topic session. I tell them that like, we have like free discussion, something like that, and then we will give them some feedbacks. And after, all, uh, after that party, I tell them this is actually Toastmaster meeting. If you have fun in this party, you can actually come to, uh, come to our uh, meetings afterwards to enjoy the, like, the full Toastmaster journey. And then afterwards, they sign up, something like that. You can try something actually very different from Toastmaster. Okay, we have last minutes, right? Uh, last minutes, uh, we have Herman and Agnes. So keep it within three minutes or so because we are running out of time. Well, I'm just going to leave 30 seconds. Uh, so Alex, I saw your comment saying that uh, you have the support from Department of English, but uh, your proof fails somewhat because our students are too shy, afraid to speak English. Uh, I, I think you can address that um, by communicating to the students that, you know, uh, if we are so good at speaking English in the public, then we probably would not need to join Toastmasters. Uh, the reason why we are joining Toastmasters is because we want to find a safe learning environment where we can continuously improve. Um, so therefore, uh, the Toastmasters Club is not uh, recruiting staff speakers. Uh, in Toastmasters, uh, we are recruiting uh, people who are afraid to speak in front of the public. Um, which is most of the people from the university. Um, so that way you can sweep your focus to the major uh, market. Um, uh, like I said, star pickers do not need to join Toastmasters. Uh, that's all. Agnes, would you like Hi. to say something? Yes, I, I have two answers for uh, advice for um, Tokyo and also Alex. For Tokyo, when you talk about committee member, new member, I, I find there is one key word is commitment you try to find, see whether that person is committed to continue to join your meeting first. Because if that person is not committed, no matter how skillful, I think, uh, this is my opinion, I feel commitment is very important. And then you build a skill. Skill can always pass to them. Next one, Alex. <clears throat> uh, Alex, do you have a few people to work with you in your team? More than one? You have two or three? I think... <clears throat> One thing is to find ways to help at your community, your school. For example, you find any kind of, no matter it's event, school, function, whatever, you just go to really help show yourself, show up yourself. That means you have to, first of all, you have to show your visibility. Then people know there is someone called Alex, and then someone is so willing to help. Then once you help, people know that you are someone who is always there to help at different events, show up, very active. Then people will be interested. Who is this Alex? Which club, uh, which society does Alex belong to in our Hang Seng University? Then people will get to know you. Then it's the time for you to promote yourself. Because if you think so hard to sell yourself first, people will feel that you are too hard sell. Correct? So I think this is my uh, two cents. I hope that will help. Uh, we can always chat uh, offline. All right, Tokyo and also Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. Uh, is there any final encouragement or inspirations from Yuki and Sophia? I would like to hear from Yuki first. Um, I guess think about the first meeting that you had. And why do you join Toastmaster? So if you can figure out that reason and also uh, the, the experience that you have in your meeting, then you know how to motivate your fellow guests and members. Good for me. And then move on to Sophia. Okay, thank you, Yuki. 
So in the conversation in the group chat, it is very interesting to see a word for fail, F-A-I-L. To be honest, in my experience, in Toastmaster, it is the best platform to practice your leadership. I believe there is no fail or success or anything in this journey because every time we do some action, we learn something, right? For example, when we do a promotion in this term on Facebook, maybe we learn something that maybe this method is workable or this method is not useful. So we learn something more. So please, every step is a learning. So don't say it is spell campaign or it is spell promotion. So we learn something. So it is how you motivate your exam as well. I know being a president or club officer is not easy. In Toastmaster, we keep learning. We keep improving. So there's no fail or mistake in this community. So keep your momentum up and everyone, everyone will get a good result. Okay, Mona. Okay, great. So thank you, Sophia and Yuki for this sharing. Um, in the next session, we're going to a club succession plans. Uh, this workshop will lead by our divisional director, Emily Ho. She's a DTM as well. Let's welcome Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Can before, you hear me? Before we yeah, continue, yeah. before we continue, Sophia, you have to unshare your screen. Okay, cool. Um, Thanks a lot, Sophia. Thank you. Yeah, Emily, you're, you're up. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Emily and um, just now we had a really very fruitful discussion. I'm glad to hear all the active participation from all the uh, discussions. And in this session, I'm going to focus a little bit more about our uh, DCP, Distinguished Club Program, as well as the club success, uh, success plan for each of your club. Um, in the past few years, I've been working in the district and also I've been a club president and area director before I being the division director. So I have quite some understanding about the uh, DCP program. So in this session, I will first introduce a bit more about uh, the DCP program to help all of you understand more about it. And then on the second part, we'll work on the club success plan. And very importantly, to be uh, to lead a successful club, of course, we need to set goals. And I believe all of you should have heard about uh, smart goals. So in order to have a, an effective goals, we need to make it smart. So smart goals means that we need to have specific goals, measurable goals, attainable goals, relevant goals, and time-based goals. And why I want to mention smart is because TI has actually helped us set up the SMART goal already. So it's specific because it's very clearly listed out all the 10 goals for all of our clubs. It's measurable because each of the goals uh, have very clear numbers about how we can achieve them, how we measure our achievement. And then A, attainable, is uh, from past results, we can see that uh, these goals are attainable, that uh, quite a number of clubs can really achieve all 10 goals. Are relevant, of course, these goals being set by TI, all these goals are relevant towards the success of the club. And then T, time-based, and is that for the DCP uh, goals, basically is within one year term that we need to complete it and then count towards the DCP points. And it's always said that for DCP, um, it provides a guideline for all of us to see which are the areas that we need to work on in order to have our club being successful. 
So we are, as I mentioned, there are 10 goals that our club should strive to achieve each year. And these goals need team efforts. So team in a, a metaphor of two aspects. One is that it requires the XCOM and also members, team efforts, team collaboration, that people, we need to work with one another. Only like having one or two really proactive members cannot help a club to be successful. But then we need the collaborative efforts from everyone to make a club being successful. And secondly, it refers to the four aspects that are covered by our 10 DCP goals. So T is in terms of the training, E is the education part, A is the administration part, and M is the membership part. So what are these details? So here is the QR code which right now you can scan through and take a look at the DCP program laid out by TI. So please have your, you can open your QR code scanner and then you can scan this QR code. And then we can reach the menu that TI has prepared. So I give you 10 more seconds and then we'll go to the file. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So hopefully you have already scanned it. And then you will be able to go to the menu. Let me see. Do I need to unshare the PowerPoint first before I can? I can show the PDF. Oh yeah, uh, because uh, it's two different um, items. Ah uh, yeah. Here we go. So on, after you scan the QR code, you should be able to receive, to open this menu book. So this book has all the details about the 10 goals, about the uh, four aspects. So right now I'm not going to really go through each page by page. So you are feel free to go through them after the session. And then I would like to show you towards the end, Towards the end, there's a summary about the tangos. So here, you can see that in education, there are six goals which we can work on. Six goals based on traditional education program, and then six goals based on the pathways program. So here, if you are familiar, if you're working on pathways, so it includes how we are going to achieve a DCP point when members have achieved level one, or members have achieved level two, three, four, five, like that. And then there are two goals, which is based on membership. So when there are four new members, then you, your club can get one DCP point for your club. And then for training, training, which include, uh, it mentioned that a minimum of four club officers trained during each of the two training periods. So basically each year we have two training um, periods, which means that uh, one is around July, August, and the other is December and January, like this year. So each time, each period, there needs to have a minimum of four club officers attending the training. And then sum up, you can get one DC point. And then for the last goal, the goal 10 is about the administration. And this includes the payment of membership deals as well as the submission of club officer list. So if your club has achieved five goals, then you will, uh, your club is uh, a distinguished club. When seven goals are achieved, then your club is a select distinguished club. 
And then when there are nine goals achieved, then your club is a president distinguished club. So these are pretty straightforward. So right now, let's see how much you understand about, about the DCP goals. Okay, so right now we um, have prepared a few questions for you to quickly check your understanding about how well you know about the DCP and then you can see how much further you need to work on with your members in order to achieve each DCP goals in the coming year. So the first question. Let me see. Can you guys see my questions? No, uh, you didn't share your screen. Nothing is seen there. Oh, yes, because I'm seeing error. <laughs> Let me check. Okay, yeah, here, here are the questions. So the first one. So you can take a look at the um, goal summary that I shared with you earlier. So how many level ones are needed to achieve one DCP goal? Anyone want to shout out the answer? Four, yes, we have Joy yeah, answering the question, very good. So uh, according to Pathways, so four members completing level one, then your club will achieve one DCP goal. So make sure that you, if you want to get this point, so you need to count which four members are likely to achieve level one in the coming months, then your club will be able to get this DCP goal. Second, how many DCP goals are achieved if four members achieved level two? Anyone? If four members achieve level two? B, oh, it's, oh, it's Aaron. <laughs> okay, very good. So it's, uh, Two DCP goals, yes. Because according to our DCP goals, we can see that P2 and P3, two members complete level two, then you'll get one DCP point, and then another two more members complete level two, then the club can get another DCP point. So it's actually pretty easy. Get four members more, uh, work harder on level one and level two, then actually you can get three DCP points very quickly. Next one, how many DCP points are achieved if two members achieved level four? Well, if, if your club have two members achieved level four, how many DCP goals can your club, club achieved? Yeah, we have an answer. Yes, it's just one. Oh, how come we have two members achieve level four? But I'm sorry, only one member completes level four it can count into the one DCP point. So if one of your member have dual membership, sometimes we allocate the two, two level four into two clubs. So um, two clubs can enjoy the level, this DCP goals achievement. Very good. And then next one, how many DCP goals are achieved if two members achieve competent leadership? So according to our traditional program, we have CC and CL. And then for CL includes the, some projects about, about um, yeah, being evaluator or being TTM or TTE, etc. So how many DCP goals are achieved if two members complete CL? Yes, the answer is B, two. Because uh, we can see that for goal number five and six, so one CL can contribute to one DCP goal, and then another one more CL also contribute to another DCP goal. So um, if some of your members are working on the traditional program, it is actually pretty easy to complete CL as well, because um, we always need lots of facilitators in a club, facilitators and evaluators. So encourage them to take these roles and uh, run for CL as well if they are working on the traditional program. 
And I also want to highlight is that, as you see that if, uh, your club have a few very, very passionate and hardworking Toastmaster, actually it's not difficult to get the points from the educational aspect. But then throughout the 12 goals under uh, education, there's only a maximum of six educational goals can be achieved to contribute to your DCP. So only a maximum six DCPs based on education's part. Okay, then let's move on to membership. So just now we mentioned a little bit about the DCP goals on membership. So here's the question. How many new members are needed to achieve the two DCP goals on membership? How many new members in total? do we need to achieve the two DCP goals on membership? Yes, we have the answer, so it's a total of eight, because four new members contribute to one DCP goals, and then four more new members then contribute to the second DCP goal. Very good. And then here is a question which is related to all of you right now that you are so hardworking attending today's training. So how many DCP goals are achieved if my club has eight club officers attending club officer training today? So anyone know it? Yes, wow, Alex got the right answer. That's insufficient information because uh, we need to see both periods of training periods attendance to see whether the club can achieve the DCP goal on training. So if your club has four club officers or both attending each of the two training periods, then your club will be able to get the one DCP point regarding training. Very good. And then last question. This club here, you can see the numbers. This club has achieved five DCP goals already. Is that goals met? It's five already. But then this club is not qualified to be a distinguished club. Why? Yes. <laughs> the reason is because here, they mentioned about the qualifying requirement. So to be considered for recognition, your club must either have 20 members or a net growth of at least five new members. So here you can see that the club currently, oh, unluckily only have 10 members right now. So it's required to have 20 members in order for the club to be qualified for the DCP program. So this club needs to work really hard to get 10 more new members then this club can already achieve distinguished club because this club has already achieved five goals. So this club needs to work hard and then can achieve distinguished. So based on that, you can see that this club below. So not all clubs needs to have 20 members. For example, this club, the base, uh, club base is only 12. So having a net growth of five means that the club only required 17 members in order to be qualified for the DCP program. So the club right now only have 15 members, not bad, more than before. So if this club can get two more new members, and at the same time, right now, the, uh, this club already met three goals. If this club, yeah, achieve two more goals, then the club can achieve distinguished status as well. So actually, it's not too difficult, but then we need to know where we are and which aspect we need to focus on. So here, just now, we have a quick overview about the 10 DCP goals. Hopefully, you have a good recap and know where your club uh, is right now. So if your club can achieve 10 goals, then the club is already achieved, distinguished. And if you can achieve a little more, like seven out of 10 goals, then your club can be a select distinguished club. 
and you can you can achieve nine or ten, then your club is President Distinguished Club, which is the highest recognition for club achievement. So regarding the DCP goals, any questions so far? If no question, then we'll move on to the second part, which is about the club success plan. And we're working on any plans. Of course, first of all, we need to know where we are. So we need to do the situation analysis to understand where we are. Before, we can plan out our action plan and see how we can get there. Then finally, we can achieve our goal. So what is an easy method to know where you are? In Toastmaster, we have a dashboard which can help each of you to know where your club status right now. So you can take up your phone and scan this QR code. Then it will bring you to the club dashboard. So I give you a few seconds. You can scan this QR code. Scan this QR code. Then it can bring you to the Toastmaster dashboard. Okay, 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so let's go to the dashboard and let me show you. Let me change the, yes, so here, here's the uh, Toastmaster dashboard. And then, um, yeah, these are all the clubs under our district, our district 89. And then you can find your club based on, you can press collapse, then you can find your own division, like division G, and then you can find your own club under your area. Or if you don't know and want to do a quick search, you can also type your name, uh, your club name on the left hand side of this menu bar. Then you can click on your club name and then go in and see. So let me take a club as an example. Let me see any student club. Okay, let's see, what about like, let's see UST MBA alumni. So for example, this club, we can take a look at uh, several aspects. For example, start off, we take a look at the membership requirement. So here, TI has already mentioned about the number of members needed to meet the qualifying requirement. So this club, if 20 members are met, then this club is a uh, met the qualifying requirement of joining the DCP program. And then right now on the right hand side, you can see the number of goals met by this club. For example, here, um, USD MBA alumni already achieved six goals. And then here you can see the 10, or we say, um, yeah, we say 10 goals, even though right now we have 12 goals under education part. Uh, you can see all the a summary of the 10 goals on the DCP program and you can see your progress. For example, on the education, this club right now has achieved one, two, three, four, five. So this club can have one more education goal to uh, run for. For example, if we see that this club have uh, level two awards already achieved one. So this club only needs one more level two, then the club can achieve the six point on the education. And then second part, which um, quite a lot of our clubs may need to work on is in terms of membership. So you can see that there are two DCP goals on the membership, which we can work on. Just now, 
in the previous discussion sessions and sharing sessions, we also heard lots of ideas about how to recruit new members. So hopefully you have uh, received some good tips which can bring back to your club. So you can see where you are right now in terms of membership. For example, this club has uh, two new members right now. And if they can get two more new members, then they can achieve one DTP point based on, on the membership. And in terms of training, goal number nine. So this club, in the first training, they already have four club officers attended. So the second training, like today, not sure if you have four officers attending today. If so, then uh, this DCP point on training can be achieved as well. And then lastly, administration, you can see whether your club has submitted membership deals and club officer list on time in the previous submission. So basically, if you submitted on time previously, then you can already achieve that easy point. So right now you can, um, yeah, in a later session, we will give you time that you can go to your own club and then uh, take a look where your club status right now. Okay, so let me move back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so just now you, you know where you are now, where your club status is based on the dashboard. Then we can go back to the menu which you, uh, I shared with you just now about the club success plan. So you can go to the menu, then it includes some detail about each aspect which you can work on. And here I have prepared a summary sheet which is pretty easy for you to do a summary for your club. So later I can share it out to the group. Then you can mark down under situation analysis, uh, what's the current status of your club? So you can mark down which goals already achieved, then you can put a take, and then mark down which, as, uh, which goals your club want to focus on in the coming half year. Then you can work out the action plan under that item. So right now, we will have a um, discussion session, and then I'll have Jim and Aaron helping me to put you into some breakout rooms. And then in this session, you can first go to the dashboard of your own club, take a look which are, which are the aspects which your club needs to work on. Then you can start to write down the action plans for your own club. And then in the breakout session rooms, then you can also discuss with your other um, Toastmaster friends to see how uh, the action plans are going. And if you need some ideas from your friends, then you can feel free to discuss together in the breakout rooms right now. So Aaron and Jim, can you help us? Yay, we're in the breakout room. A uh, breakout room is uh, just for everyone's information. It's a small group whereby we are we are located with different rooms. Everyone is having their own small group discussion here. So you can unmute yourself. It's actually much quieter here. Hey. Hey. I'm looking at two black boxes. <laughs> no, because they haven't. Um, I would say. Show us your video. Yeah, at least we need to meet new people. We have uh, we have from Ningnan University, we have Hong Kong U Space, and then we have the president. Uh, I think I think I've seen the president before, right? The Hong Kong U Space. I've seen her so many times. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. So everyone can actually share your. Um, there is actually a DCP um, goal list. Uh, if you have downloaded the, 
If you download the PDF file, you actually can see that. And then think about what sort of items can your club achieve in this time. For example, uh, if let me try to zoom mine then. Is it club success points? So everyone been to your dashboard before? Have any if you have been to a dashboard, just raise your hand. You haven't you don't know what the dashboard is. No one knows what the dashboard is. I, I see the very curious look on the face of our president in from Hong Kong space. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll just share for a bit. Okay, so first thing, um, I'll just share my screen. So basically you go and type dashboard, dashboard at uh, .toastmaster.org. Uh, everyone can do so. And then after which, uh, let's say for example, I want to pick uh, Hong Kong U space, right? Hong Kong space, you can see that I'm typing on the left hand side, Hong Kong U space. And then hopefully I can find your club. Uh, you don't exist anymore, don't worry. I typed wrongly. <laughs> Hong Kong U, and then after which there's a Hong Kong U campus, Hong Kong U space. Let's click for Hong Kong U space right now. So currently for Hong Kong U space, you have three goals that you have met. You can see from here, it's here, three goals. And then after which currently you have 25 paid members. You just need to fulfill 20. So basically your focus this year is to get two more points. Clear? It's very simple. So you can discuss your strategies on how do you actually get two more points. So when you go and scroll down, scroll down more, and then I have to try to remove my notes because it's very ugly. Uh, we can see that we have lots of new members for Hong Kong U campus, and then basically the membership uh, renewals have been done promptly. So for this part, uh, it's the educational goal. So you have your WPPR here, you have the present here, uh, you can unmute yourself and share with us your thoughts. How do you actually get the remaining two points, which is pretty easy to get actually. Hi, President. There's, there's no right or wrong answer though, don't worry. And are we PPR? Unmute yourself, we, we can hear you actually. Or you can share with us your, your parents playing Mahjong. Uh, we we are still very happy for that. <laughs> so basically, Hi. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, you can so say it a bit louder. <clears throat> uh, so basically, uh, what happened is our membership, uh, the amount of members in our club actually dropped a bit this year. And that is through no uh, fault of our own and through no fault of our president. Uh, she worked really hard on by herself to uh, maintain the amount of club members that we have just currently. So um, we're just uh, going to try to next year, uh, try to recruit, actively recruit a lot more people. Like I just said, this year our club president had to do uh, everything by herself, including the rec recruitment and uh, you know, one person is still very limited manpower. So. Uh, we have uh, quite a quite an extensive uh, membership right now. Uh, lots of roles have been taken up, uh, lots of em uh, previously empty roles. So we expect our membership to uh, jump up a bit by next year. And we think uh, by doing so, we'll be able to uh, get those two points. Mm. Because it's mainly about those speeches, like you need to have those speeches like uh, CC6 or level one and the two to actually participate in the international speech contest, for example. So yeah, just saying, uh, and then if you really want to join it, it's, it's not really hard to finish level one, level two. It requires eight speeches. Uh, eight speeches can be done online right now. You can actually say, look, I want to have an online meeting right now. Like anyone up for grabs or table topics. And then after which, oh, there is a meeting. And then there is the evaluation. And voila, you have finished one speech. So it's, it's how he goes for that situation for that. 
uh, we'll definitely try to find <laughs> if people are willing to, uh, yeah, uh, attend those uh, sort of speeches. It's still a little bit difficult, you know, given the situation right now, but uh, we'll, we'll try. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, how about our present? Uh, I think she worked very really hard because she has lots of toys behind her back. And uh, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> but yeah, you can share your thoughts about the arrangements, how you can actually achieve that. I can't hear you. Your mic is not working. Pluck out your mic. Uh, I know my bus bunny is playing music, but it, it shouldn't affect you guys. Does it work? Or oh, you can type in the chat box. It's still fine. While waiting, actually, we want to uh, hear from uh, Ningna University. Tian Tian, are you there? How, how is Ningna University going with all these riots and coronavirus? Yes, we're going this. Actually, for our school, it is really fine that we have our our uh our uh members number are like i i think is uh is good like reach to the standard but uh for every meeting our challenge is also the table topic section that yeah. no one no one like not no one but there's only like few people every meeting they are willing to uh go up to uh give a speech like this yeah, I see. So, so it's about the meeting quality. Yeah. So, it, it, but then now, now that you are not meeting in person, are you meeting online? Uh, Have you considered to meet online already? Not yet. Uh, if you need the requirements for an online meeting, just let me know because I'm actually your area director, and also yeah. let let our um gym when know as well so that we can actually reserve the rooms so and you can have the experience online just like today you hear lots of different workshops you yep. hear different speeches too and sharings for for me you guys actually broke the record for the most number of members in hong kong 58 people but uh nowadays achievers is trying to catch you up so we have also three goals so let me look at what goals they are i think it's usually members I think members actually give you two points. Man. Yep, members and membership. So for the educational goals, as mentioned before, uh, your situation is same as Hong Kong U. Uh, the yep. difference is that the educational awards have to be submitted so that you can have the two more points for your club. And you achieve a uh, distinguished because most of the time in Lingnan University, you guys have like distinguished or present distinguished occasional ones. So you just need to remind your president that, look, uh, uh, we, we are going to achieve these goals. And if you are doing your speeches, level one is very easy to achieve that. Hmm. How about Joy? We have lots of sharings from Joy just now. Uh, how is things going on for Joy for your Hong Kong U campus? Yeah, I mean, I just had an exco meeting, so we're aiming for nine goals because we get money from HKU. Um, yeah, that's, that's a nice motivation to get money. So next, why but, wouldn't it be? No, and and it's really nice to like because I know Hong Kong U actually has a very nice system of as long as you're part of Hong Kong U, you get free trips. I heard that legend. Free like trips? You, yeah, you can get to travel to somewhere. I remember. Oh, that's for exchange. Yeah, I envy yeah. that. So you have 47 members and basically you've already achieved those goals, six points. So remaining wise, uh, uh, I know that you, uh, you are very, very hardworking. So you have devoted two pounds. <laughs> basically, you can wait, wait out for the next year. You do not need to Spend. Yeah, like what we did was kind of um, have the mentors identify, okay, who's where and what could they achieve by the end of the year. And I think it's reasonable, like we can go for nine in total. Yeah, it's reasonable to motivate your members to do the basics because I know you guys are very experts in level three, four, five. You see, you see that it's two yeah. people doing for that, you know? And, and I think one of the things we encourage our club members to do is to 
not go in order like like wait um maybe i can show you something it, can yeah, you let me share my screen why not go ahead okay can you guys see my screen right now can you see my screen yes yes okay so like this is my second path i started I started in September and you can see how messed up the order is like I I don't go in order <laughs> but sometimes uh, like we encourage our members to just like kill two birds with one stone you know like earlier this month I no last month sorry oh uh, it's already February I did a Hong Kong stories event and one of my friends was also participating and he evaluated me and I got to finish a level three but then I didn't even do level two yet. Like, but I said, you know what? Kill two birds with one stone. As long as the evaluation forms there, I'm done with this. And then when we were stuck in the situation of not being able to go to university because of the the protest last month, uh, no, not last month, uh, no, in November, I made a video to make announcements for our university club about contests and that kind of stuff so that became another level three project so i'm like killing so many birds with so many stones which is not normal for a vegetarian um but <laughs> <laughs> see what i mean so yeah. you should kind of tell your members don't be afraid to you don't have there's no right way to finish this there's no correct order you know yeah just just go for it. I think it's uh, it's a good idea um, for Hong Kong Youth Space, Ningnan University. Uh, for Joy, you can actually guide them through using online uh, because you have someone that is actually very experienced for that. So feel free to add each other on the WhatsApp, both yes. presidents. And then after which you also have your area director, which is in the uh, gallery. Uh, uh, gallery view, you actually have your Maggie as well. Uh, feel free to add her. Uh, she's your area director to support. Uh, if you're done, please remain. Uh, finally, for the president of Gap Toastmasters, are you there? I think he's not there. So basically, if you notice on the notification on top, there's only one minute off before we go back to the main room. So any other questions before we, we conclude this? There's one in the chat. Um, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, yeah, due to suspension. Feel free to think about that when you do online, like even like a table topic speech, that actually fulfills a few criteria too. Um, like a, giving a toast or even like sharing stories. Um, when you're having a lunch gathering or dinner gathering, you actually can go back uh, for that. So now you have a pop-up room saying that uh, breakout rooms in progress and then you can return back to the main room just now. So don't worry, we will not throw you out of the room or virtually. So you just need to click on the return to main session and then resume the workshop. So thank you for everyone's contribution for today.